Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about quadratic equations and the quadratic formula. When you have an equation that's a polynomial of degree 2 set equal to 0, you call it a quadratic equation. And it looks something like this. So a, b, and c are going to be real numbers, and a is assumed not to equal 0 because the x squared term being present here is what makes this a quadratic equation. Since this equation is set equal to 0, the solutions are called roots. In general, a quadratic equation will have two roots. Sometimes both of those roots end up being the same thing, though. This video talks about how to find those roots. We go over two main methods. The first thing we can try doing is factoring the polynomial. If we can get the polynomial written in factored form, it will reveal our roots in a nice way. So, in the case that our quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to the factored form dx minus s, times e x minus t, where d, e, s, and t are just some real numbers that satisfy this equation, then we can find our roots in an easy way. The idea here is that I've gotten the entire polynomial written as a product of two different things. And we also know that if I multiply 0 by anything, I get 0 as an answer. So what I need to look for are x values that make either the left quantity inside parentheses equal to 0 or the right quantity inside the parentheses equal to zero. So we essentially are going to get two different linear equations that we need to solve for, and this is generally a pretty fast process. The quantity on the left will give us the equation dx minus s equals zero, which simplifies to x equals s over d, and the quantity on the right gives us ex minus t equals to zero, which simplifies to x equals t over e. This is all written in a very general format, but the main idea, again, is that I need one quantity or the other to be equal to zero. So I set both quantities inside the parentheses equal to zero sort of in their own right, and I find precisely the x values that zero the whole thing out. Let's look at some examples. Consider the equation x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals to zero. It's known this polynomial can factor, so let's do so x squared plus 2x plus 1 is equal to x plus 1 times x plus 1, so we set that equal to 0. Now both quantities inside the parentheses are the same, so the only equation we need to solve is x plus 1 equals to 0, which gives us a root of x equals to negative 1. In this next example, consider x squared minus 2x equals 3 as our quadratic equation. So this isn't quite in the form that we want it to be in, but we can fix that by subtracting 3 from both sides to get x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals to 0. This polynomial factors into x minus 3 times x plus 1, so set that equal to 0. Here, our linear factors are both different, so we'll have two linear equations to solve. The first is x minus 3 equals 0, which gives us x equals 3 as our first root, and the second is x plus 1 equals 0, which gives us x minus 1 as our second root and we're done. For our third example, look at the quadratic equation 2x squared plus 2 equals to 5x. Like above, we want everything else on one side and 0 on the other, so subtract 5x from both sides to get 2x squared minus 5x plus 2 equals 0. This polynomial will factor into 2x minus 1 times x minus 2. Again, we have two linear equations to solve. The first is 2x minus 1 equals 0, which gives us x equals to 1 half, and the second is x minus 2 equals 0, which gives us x equals 2. Now we need to tackle the question of what to do when our polynomials don't factor. So this is method 2, where we use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula says that if I have a quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, then it has roots negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, over 2a. So the thing about the quadratic formula is that it always works, but if our polynomial factors, it's generally a faster process. So if your polynomial does not factor, then you use this formula. The plus minus symbol that's installed into this formula means that you're going to have two separate answers usually. I'll also say that if you're in an algebra class right now, this is a good thing to memorize. Let's look at some examples of this formula in action. Consider the quadratic equation x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. Once we've identified a as 1, b as minus 2, and c as minus 1, we can start plugging into the formula. 
Once I do that, I get minus negative 2 plus minus the square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 1 all over 2 times 1. And this simplifies down to 2 plus minus the square root of 4 plus 4 all over 2. Another round of simplification gives us 2 plus minus the square root of 8 over 2. And since 8 is equal to 2 squared times 2, we can rewrite the numerator as 2 plus minus 2 times the square root of 2. And then we notice that the 2's cancel out of the numerator and denominator, giving us a final answer of 1 plus minus the square root of 2. Therefore, the roots of this quadratic equation are 1 plus the square root of 2 and 1 minus the square root of 2. In our next example, consider the quadratic equation 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals to 0. We identify a equals 3, b equals 2, and c equals negative 1. We can go ahead and start plugging into the formula. This gives us minus 2 plus minus the square root of 2 minus 4 times 3 times negative 1 over 2 times 3, which after some arithmetic simplifies down to 2 plus minus the square root of 16 over 6. And since the square root of 16 is equal to 4, we get 2 plus minus 4 over 6, simplifying down to 2 plus minus 1 over 3 after we cancel the 2s. Once all is said and done, we have that our roots are equal to 1 plus 2 over 3, which comes down to 1, and minus 1 third.